The, as we discussed that uh, two stages are there starting with the first one the sporophyte sporophyte is a independent dominant diploid auto phototrophic stage and uh, which get established in the moist places and uh, the sporophyte is a dominant stage which can prepare its own food materials because they have the chlorophyll and uh, that is the way how they perform the auto phototrophic type of nutrition and the plant each and every cell in the plant body is, is having two sets of chromosomes so deployed in their nature and uh, it is independent so that uh, it will absorb water and minerals from the soil with the help of uh, roots and uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to perform photosynthesis and prepare the food materials. So here the sporophyte plant body have three types of uh, parts root, stem and leaves. The sporophyte plant body is differentiated into three parts. So here the all these three parts are the true structures. So when we are discussing the bryophytes we said that uh, root stem and leaf in the bryophytes are not the true structures because they were not having they does not have vascular tissue and they are the part of gametophytic plant body but not the sporophyte. But when you are discussing here related to the pteridophytes that the parts that is uh, root stem and leaf are the true structures. Why? Because they have vascular tissue at the same time they are the part of the sporophytic plant body. That is the reason why they are considered to be the true root, true stem and the true leaves. So here if you come to the root system, generally they have adventitious roots. As we know that uh, generally the roots will perform the fixation of the plant into the soil and absorption of water and minerals. So the same functions are performed by the root here also where they are having branched structure. Then Salvinia is example which is aquatic and uh, which lack roots. And here if the roots are absent and the plant is an aquatic one it is having direct contact with the water. So each and every part particularly the leaves of this plant will absorb water by diffusion process. That is the reason why the roots are uh, not much important in the life of a salvinia plant. Then coming to the stem. Stem may be in some of the plants it is aerial or in some of them it is underground also. So aerial means it is present above the surface of the soil and uh, underground present inside the soil like a uh, rhizomatous stem is present in equisitum. So rhizomatous stem means uh, the underground stem which is horizontally present inside the soil with dorsiventral differentiation. Then this may be either prostrate or sometimes in most of them it may be erect. Prostrate means it will creep on the soil surface and erect means it will stand straight. And uh, the stem generally it will be branched and it will produce uh, the appendages on it those are called as uh, leaves. And if you see the internal structure of the stem basically the stem shows uh, three parts those are uh, epidermis. cortex and steel. These are the three parts which can be seen in the stem and here the steel is a specific or it is having some special features in the stem of uh, these members. And here when you are talking about the steel, the steel contains uh, pericycle vascular tissue that is xylem and phloem and some may have medulla and some may not have the medulla. Apart from that one they have some special structures called as a leaf traces. 
so that is a reason why the there are different uh, arrangement patterns in the steel so those are proto steel siphono steel soleno steel dictio steel likewise different uh, methods or different uh, arrangement patterns are present in the steel so let us see the characteristic features of uh, different types of uh, steel are organization in the stem of uh, pteridophyta plants and one more thing that uh, the stem of uh, pteridophytes does not exhibit uh, secondary growth but exceptional cases are there where secondary growth may be present but uh, in majority of the plants secondary growth is completely absent in the steel or organization the first one is a proto steel proto steel is considered to be the primitive one here this is called as a non medullated steel that is the steel in which the medulla is completely absent so if you see the organization so this is outermost layer that is a epidermis inside which uh, the endodermis is present inside the endodermis this is a pericycle and inside the pericycle one part is occupied by phloem and the central part is occupied by the xylem so here the middle part of the steel is occupied by xylem which is surrounded by phloem so here the medulla is not present so this type of arrangement is called as a proto steel arrangement which is present in the primitive organisms then second one is a siphono steel siphono steel is formed from proto steel in which the medulla appears that is uh, the proto steel with medulla or medullated proto steel is called as siphono steel so if you see the organization of this siphono steel so this is the epidermis and uh, inside which we can see the endodermis inside the endodermis pericycle is present and uh, inside that pericycle phloem and inside the phloem xylem is present and apart from this xylem the middle part is occupied by medulla this type of organization in which the medulla appears in the central part of the steel this type of steel is called as a siphono steel which is formed from the proto steel due to the formation of medulla in the middle of the steel the third one is a soleno steel soleno steel is the one in which a siphono steel with the leaf gaps siphono steel with leaf gaps is called as a soleno steel and these leaf gaps are scattered scattered leaf gaps are present so such type of uh, arrangement is called as soleno steel so here this type of arrangement uh, will be seen in the plants with the macrophyllous condition that is a uh, compound uh, nature will be there so this is epidermis outermost part then this is endodermis inside the endodermis we can see the presence of uh, pericycle and inside the pericycle we can observe the presence of uh, phloem tissue this uh, this is the phloem tissue 
and uh, inside the phloem this uh, is occupied by xylem tissue. So the central part is occupied by the xylem and here we can see that uh, this actually in the siphon of steel the continuous ring of uh, steel was there but here the steel have been broken to leave a small gap. This small gap is called as a leaf gap. So why does the leaf gap have been formed means here in the macrophyllous leaves the this part of the steel this part of the steel is uh, transferred or uh, will be given to the leaf. So here which is a continuous with the vascular tissue of the leaf that is the reason why this gap have been formed. So this gap have been formed because of uh, leaf traces. So here we can see the leaf trace structure here. So leaf trace because of the leaf trace a gap is formed that is called as a leaf gap. If the leaf gaps of, are scattered so then the type of uh, uh, steel is called as a soleno steel and the next one is a uh, dictio steel. In dictio steel the leaf gaps are present but these leaf gaps are overlapping. Overlapping leaf gaps are present. So here so because of overlapping of the leaf gaps small pieces uh, the steel is divided into small pieces and here if you observe the structure of this uh, dictio steel arrangement. So this is the epidermis and uh, here we can see only leaf gap one leaf gap here in the solno steel but this type of leaf gaps are many in the dictio steel where the steel is divided into small pieces. and each steel have its individual endodermis. So this is outermost one is a endodermis. So this one is a pericycle. Inside the pericycle this part is called as phloem and inside the phloem xylem is present. So each and every vascular structure is divided into these four parts like this and uh, this type of arrangement in which uh, many such leaf gaps are present and the, these leaf gaps are showing overlapping nature. And these uh, small pieces are called as a meristils. Each of them is called as a meristil and uh, these gaps are called as leaf gaps. So this type of arrangement in actually we should not call them as a vascular bundles because in the higher plants the vascular bundles are present in the form of a ring like structure in the dicot stem but there how does that organization is different from this one is in the dicot stems we call that arrangement as a U steel condition in which uh, all the vascular bundles are surrounded by one circle of uh, peris pericycle and one circle of endodermis but here every small piece have its individual pericycle and individual endodermis. So that is a difference that we find between the U steel arrangement of dicots from that of the dictio steel type of arrangement in the pteridophyta plants. So this type of uh, variations can be seen in the steel of uh, stem in the pteridophyta group of plants. In the vascular tissues we know that uh, xylem and uh, phloem are present. Generally xylem lack vessels and uh, phloem lack sieve tube elements and companion cells. So these are that means uh, xylem contains uh, other tissues like uh, tracheids, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers whereas the phloem contains uh, sieve cells, phloem fibers and phloem parenchyma. So this type of organization is present and here in pteridophytes tracheids are the main water conducting tissue.
whereas here in phloem the sieve cells are the main food conducting tissue then there are some exceptionals where uh, vessel containing pteridophytes are also been seen so these vessel containing pteridophytes are selaginella equisetum and uh, marsilia these are the exceptional cases where vessels are present along with the tracheids in the xylem but there is no such uh, example where the sieve tubes are present these are some of the exceptional cases related to the presence of uh, vessels in the pteridophyta group of plants then here if we come to the leaves in pteridophyta plants two types of leaves are there those are called as a uh, microphylls and uh, macrophylls so microphylous condition is present in lycopodium selaginella and equisetum like examples whereas macrophylls are present in the ferns and uh, here as we have seen that uh, leaf gaps are present so leaf gaps are not uh, disturbing the vascular tissues in the stem of uh, plants with microphylls whereas the plants which are having the macrophylls in those plants the vascular tissue is uh, disturbed in the stem because of the formation of the leaf gaps that type of variation can be seen and uh, in the leaves they show some particular characteristic feature and the name pteridophytes are also been given based on that particular feature only that is a uh, feather like leaves the leaves are feather like because of that character only the name pteridophytes are phyta have been uh, given to the group of plants and here the young leaves will show some particular a uh, specific character that particular specific character is called as a circinate vernation circinate vernation means in pteridophyta group of plants the young leaves will show coiling like structure like, like this they coil like a watch spring this watch spring like coiling structure is called as a circinate vernation this character is shown in the young leaves and uh, when they become mature or uh, in the growing stages they uncoil the coiling will open up and uh, they, the all the leaves will be leaflets will be exposed likewise uh, particular specific character can be seen in the pteridophyta group of plants which is considered to be the unique feature of the pteridophytes in the leaves the sporophyte plant will participate in the asexual reproduction in which uh, the vegetative leaves will be converted into sporophylls sporophylls means the spore containing leaves spore containing leaves so here the leaves may be scattered in some of them the leaves may be scattered and in some of them they are compact and form strobili or strobilus plural is strobilus strobile and singular is strobilus so here scattered scattered nature can be seen in dryopteris and uh, strobilus or arrangement can be seen in equisetum and the other examples are lycopodium and selaginella and in some of the plants the sporangia are born in in special structures these special structures are called as sporocops sporocop can be seen in salvinia azolla and marsilia like examples 
So like uh, we can see the deviation in the arrangement of the spores. In some of them they are free and scattered. Some of them they form into strobilus. If we see the structure of uh, equisetum plant, you can see that uh, at the tip of that plant we can see the compact arrangement of cone shaped structure. This uh, compact arrangement of uh, structure is called as a strobilite and this is a stem and in the stem here here and there we can see the nodes and internodes from the nodal part the branches will be arising. and uh, the underground part will be there. So this is called as a rhizome and from the lower part of the rhizome we can see the development of the adventitious roots. So this part is called as a rhizome and uh, this is a main axis. In the main axis this part is called as a internode and uh, this part, this one and this one are called as a node and these are called as a branches, then strobilus. That is the, all these other sporophylls which are compactly arranged. Likewise, this type of organization can be seen in the plant equisetum. A sexual reproduction occurs by production of the spores and here the spores are produced in special structures called as sporangia and this sporangia will uh, develop in the form of uh, groups called as sorus and the sorus will develop on the leaf like structures called as a sporophylls and here the sporangia which contains the spores the development of uh, sporangia will be of two types one is a uh, eusporangiate type of development and uh, leptosporangiate type of development. Here if the sporangia develops from a group of uh, superficial cells then we call it as a eusporangiate type of development whereas if uh, the sporangia develops from either one or few number of cells of superficial layer that is called as a leptosporangia type of development and out of this leptosporangia type of development is considered as a advanced type when compared to the eusporangia type of development. Eusporangia type of development can be seen in examples like Selaginella and Coelotum whereas leptosporangia type of development can be seen in Salvinia. Marsilia and uh, Dryopteris like examples. Then here the sporangia produces the spores and here two conditions are there. One is based on the nature of the spores. Some are homosporous and some of the members of pteridophytes are heterosporous. Homosporous means all the spores which are produced in the sporangium are of same type. Similar or same type of uh, spores are produced in the sporangium. There is no differentiation between the spores. All of them are similar structure, shape and size. And uh, this type of nature can be seen in examples like Lycopodium. Whereas heterosporic condition is the one in which uh, different uh, types of spores are produced in the sporangium. And here different types means uh, two types are there. 
those are called as microspores and uh, some of them are called as macrospores generally they show difference in their sizes microspores are comparatively smaller in size whereas macrospores are big in size or large in size and here the microspores when they germinate they give rise to male gametophyte whereas macrospores will give rise to the female gametophyte that means heterosporic condition leads to the formation of gametophytes which are dioecious in their nature leads to the formation of dioecious gametophytes this type of uh, heterosporic condition can be seen in examples like marsilia selaginella and isoitis then here when the spores are of same type that is homosporic condition is present in that condition here monoecious type of gametophytes are produced so what do you mean by this monoecious type of gametophytes means the gametophyte which bear both the sex organs that is male sex organ and uh, and also the female sex organ are present on the same gametophytic plant whereas dioecious means the male gametophyte and the female gametophyte are separate that is male gametophyte contains male sex organs that is antheridium whereas the female gametophyte contains the female sex organ called as archegonium so that type of variation can be seen in the gametophytes based on whether they are forming from homosporous condition or from the heterosporous condition and here pteridophytes some of them are showing homospory and some of them are showing heterospory condition when the sporophyte participate in the asexual reproduction they produce the spores and here the spores are produced from uh, their mother cells those are called as microspore mother cell which is produced in the sporangium which is diploid in its nature this microspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form microspores each microspore mother cell will produce four haploid microspores in the same way so here this microspore will give rise to the male gametophyte this which is also haploid in its nature whereas if a megaspore mother cell is present in the sporangium which is also diploid in its nature and this megaspore mother cell will also undergo meiosis to produce megaspore or macrospore which are haploid in their nature so this megaspore mother cell is otherwise called as macrospore mother cell also then this uh, macrospore will uh, ger germinate to give rise to female gametophyte so which is uh, haploid in its nature so this type of divisions can be seen in the heterosporous conditions whereas if it is homosporous condition only the spore mother cell will be there which is diploid in its nature this spore mother cell will undergo meiosis to produce spores all the spores are of same type and uh, these are haploid in their nature and these spores when they germinate they give rise to the gametophyte and this gametophyte is already we had said that uh, it is haploid and uh, monoecious in its nature that means here in all the cases here microspore mother cell is undergoing meiosis macrospore mother cell is undergoing meiosis here the spore mother cell is undergoing meiosis here that that means we can say in these members of pteridophytes sporic meiosis will takes place sporic meiosis is present leading to the formation of haploid spores in the sporangium and uh, these spores which are formed inside the sporangium will be liberated and uh, they are uh, dispersed with the help of the wind
and uh, they fall on suitable substratum and germinate and give rise to the next generation. That next generation is called as uh, gametophytic generation.